all right then you know uh, so in here for example uh, um, uh, values of the subfield and the control format this is the control uh, uh, control the frames okay so uh, request to send RTS this is subtypes um, uh, these are the addresses remember that we I'm not going to explain it again we already explained it last time that in the frame you will have four addresses address one address two and address three and address four all right so remember when you're communicating let's go back in here all right so it could be only ad hoc so in here there is no access point right so it's gonna go from address to one address how about here has to go from the source address to the access point address from the access point as it's gonna go to station three addresses how about here it has to go from the source address to the address of the access point all right to the address of the other access point then from the uh, access point gonna go to the ad destination address in here so there's four addresses involved in here so there is a map for it. So that these are the four addresses. If the communication is like this one, all right. So only two addresses will be used in the frame. Only two addresses will be in, in used in the frame. All right, clear. So um, it needed like deep. Uh, so in here, for example, it's uh, only two addresses uh, used. Anyways. And then we spoke about two problems, the hidden station problem, all right, and what's the solution for it, and we, uh, and then we spoke about the exposed station uh, problem, all right. Uh, then we have we spoke about the Bitcoin net, the scatter net, uh, frame format types. Again, okay, each communication, each protocol, they are transmitting data in a frame. The structure of a frame different from protocol to protocol all right it's like a map so you need to read the manual understand how it works what everything mean why is it there okay as simple as that so again you have like hundreds of protocols um and all of them like half headers and the header have information just you have to learn how to read it okay you have to learn how uh, to read it then in here we move on to point-to-point -point communication all right so um, uh, which is um, um, you know um, so in the previous one it was not a point-to-point -point, right it was one media so if you go in here let's go back anywhere anywhere okay and let's go anywhere anywhere come on and uh, here let's go here so this is not a point-to-point -point communication this is multi-point right multi-point accessing the media okay multi okay so this wire in here there is multi points so that's why we have to have a mechanism for collision detection or collision avoidance Okay, this is like multi-point. It's not point-to-point. -point. It is not point-to-point uh, -point communication. You agree? So now we're going to come in here. Okay, it, how about the wireless? The wireless, is it point-to-point -point communication? Nope. All right? Because it's like uh, the air. You have, could have multiple communications at the same uh, time. Multiple communications at the same time all right so um however we could connect side to side with point to point this may go to okay so uh, the second type of the network okay uh, we encounter in the internet is point to point and this is in the wide area network so the point to point one connects two remote devices using a line available from a public network Okay, online, point to point from a public network. An example for that is the telephone network. Okay. All right, so um, in here they talk about like many obsolete technologies, uh, 65K modems. If you are old like me, and I'm not that old by the way, 
and we use the modems uh, when we started using the internet. So we use the computer, we add a modem, all right, and we plug the modem to the phone line. There was no DSL and modem when we started, and, and cable when we started using the internet. Anybody of you use the modem before? Yes, I have. Who is that? Joe? Yes. You don't you're not you're not my age, you're not that old. Where did you use it? Well what happened I did a computer course in Bridgeport. It was called Biome and it is shows. I see, I see. Yeah, but I never actually used it in terms of functionality. I okay. saw it. I, I okay, excellent. Yeah, because you're too young to use <laughs> <laughs> to use more, you know, um, in early 1990s, that's what we used, used like uh, the modem, okay, and it was like a, a, a device, you connect to your computer, PCI, or PCMCI in your laptop, and you plug it to the phone jack, so the communication will go over the phone line, then after that, until now, all of us have at home either DSL, uh, technology where it combines the voice f phone voice and the internet or cable modem okay co co it combines the three actually the voice the internet and the video the cable all right and then the t lines sonnet is for trunking and the uh, ppp we'll take a look at them this is obsolete nobody use this is until now we use most of most of us i think we use cable modem right now um, and the rest are special cases. All right, so let's take a look, take a look at uh, all technology in here. Uh, it's like the modem. And by the way, in here they say 56 kilo, kilobits per second. Actually, it's 56.6 kilobits per second. When we started, when I started, it was 16.6 16 .6 kilobits per second. Then I, uh, the next modem I bought, it was 32.2 kilobits per second, and then 56.6 kilobits per second. Just, 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 just imagine that we were dealing with kilobits per second. Kilobits per second. I repeat it for more, more, more time, just to appreciate what you have. Nowadays, at our home, we have hundred megabits per second. All right, mega, hundred megabits per second, which is like thousand times faster than this. Okay, thousand times. Uh, faster than this and still find everything uh, slow all right so if you do like at your um, uh, in computer speed test I think some of us will come like uh, to 200 or something uh, so in here gigabit megabits per second not giga oh giga I mean so yeah. okay So run a speed of test. So this is my house. I pay, I think, like 70 bucks a month. And the upload is about 146.4 megabits per second. And the download, it will be about 10 megabits per second. We'll talk about it in a sec. Actually, wow. See how slow it is? It's like 4 megabits per second. That's the upload. All right. And that's the download. All right. So, uh, and compare it uh, to what we had uh, um, before. So basically, the way the technology was working, in short, just to know about what was going on. So this is your computer, laptop. You will have a modem, okay? And the modem is actually two devices in one device: modulator and demodulator, combined in one device. So what is the function of modulator to convert the digital data you have in your computer? As you see it in here is a digital. It will be converted to analog data. Why? Because the phone lines, they're analog, not digital. And the data in your computer is digital. So the modem will modulate the data to convert the digital data into uh, an analog an analog data. This way it will be able to run on the phone line. 
and we used to use PCM, a pulse code modulation. Okay, again, this is an uh, algorithm. Uh, you don't have to know it for this class. Okay, pulse code modulation, which will okay, uh, and 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 um, uh, which is a sampling technique. Uh, sampling, if you don't know what sampling is, a mechanism to convert digital signal into analog uh, signal. And of course, it, it tries to uh, take care of the noise that it could pick up in the transmission. Then the data will be transmitted over the telephone network until it goes to the ISP server. So this is, we call it uploading, uploading the data to the internet service provider server. For downloading is the same thing. You have the data will be transmitted and it will be sent over um, um, uh, analog uh, signal. But when it comes to your machine, the function of the modem or demodulator to convert the analog signal back to the digital signal. Remember, our computers are zeros and ones. They are digital. Phone, phone's voice is analog. So that was the process, all right? So you use a modem for modulation and demodulation. Most of you, you don't have to worry about it. We don't use it. We did in the past, and it was, uh, you know, um, uh, a very interesting. Either, uh, either, even, um, so Joel, Joel says now is a gigabit. I understand there's gigabit, but not to your house. Not to your, so that's for the backbone. Uh, communication and and you saw the tests we run together. Oh, I have a question. Go ahead. Um, back when we use dial-up, you'd have to connect to begin with, and it would make like fax machine noises. What was it doing when it was doing that? W what does it do when you connect? Yeah, is it? <clears throat> there yeah, is a process. It? Well, there is a process. So signals will be sent for the connection to establish the connection. All right. And um, um, uh, so there is, uh, this is the real data signal will be transmitted in the third step. But the first step is to do the connection. And when it does the connection, their signals goes back and forth until it reserves the circuit. It reserves the circuit, one of the circuit. Uh, like the phone systems is a circuit switched, is a switch circuits. When you call, you reserve a circuit. So the circuit will be dedicated circuit. And that's what will happen. Then after that, the communication will go uh, using one circuit and when you disconnect the circuit will be released and build and somebody else will acquire it all right okay, thank you you're welcome so and here then after that we have the adsl okay uh, uh, is a symmetric communication technology designed for residential users it's not used for business it does not work for business. And the problem that may, maybe you could figure out the major problem is ADSL is like from, it comes from the phone companies, right? So if you'll have like um, a bandwidth allocated for the voice. I see it in here, like when you call on the phone. <clears throat> but, you know, uh, there the, there is also bandwidth channels allocated for the upstream. So upstream is when you send the data out, all right? And usually it's, a, it's low, it's a very slow. And the downstream is very high. And this is a very clever design. Why? Because like at your home, what is mostly you're doing there? It's downloading. When you're browsing the internet, you're downloading. Okay, when you, um, 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 <clears throat> um, uh, uh, when you uh, uh, are listening to a music or watching a video or whatever. So what are you doing? Mostly you are downloading, all right? So instead of like the, make it equal and waste the bandwidth for the upstream, they made like a small, uh, a small uh, bandwidth. They allocate a small channels for the upstream, and they made most of it for the downstream. All right, this will not work for a business model. The reason for that in the business model, you providing the data. Let's say that you have a web server. Okay. So let's say that you created a web server at your home. It will be very slow because when somebody tries to download from your web server, you are uploading to the internet. And because you have limited channels for the upload, it will be very slow. So it's not efficient. It's not efficient. 
All right. So when you take a look in here, the ADSL and uh, you know how it works. Um, so you you'll have uh, in here the telephone company office, and this is the customer residence. So um, um, <clears throat> so that uh, so you 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 have the voice to the telephone network, and you have in here the data uh, using the DSL uh, amplifier. Okay, and this is gonna go to the internet. Same thing in here in the customer, you'll have the modem, the ADSL modem, all right? And the ADSL modem, will, I mean, your wire will hit the filter. The filter will know where to send the data. If it's, if it's like a data, it will send it to the ADSL modem to your computer. If it's a voice, then your phone will ring at home, all right? So what's happening in here? It's one line carrying both voice, which is analog signal, and data, which is a digital signal. Who takes care of this is the, uh, the modem. All right. So, um, yep, so that's exactly what, what happens uh, in the ADSL. Many of us, uh, maybe until now, they use uh, the ADSL. Myself, I switched to cable. Which is almost the uh, you know the the same. It's not a big difference. Um, 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 you know, um, uh, and same thing. Maybe cable a little bit faster, but it's not like uh, uh, a big uh, difference. There is other technologies in ADSL. Um, so um, uh, again, in here when you go back in here, so you have the voice in here, which is uh, channel zero reserved for voice communication. And these are ideal, uh, idle. Why they are idle in here? Uh, channel one to five, they are not used to create a gap between the voice. We don't have to go through the details uh, too much, but you know, I'm trying to explain a few things in here. Then you have the upstream data in here, the upstream data and control, which is channel six to 30, uh, 20, almost 25 channels, actually 25 channels. And these are used for upstream, the data, um, uh, uh, upstream data transfer and control. Okay, w okay, one channel, each channel of these, or one channel of these, um, um, uh, uh, one channel of these are for control, and the 24 channels are for the transfer. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, there's a lot, of, and then you have the downstream channel in here, which is from 31 to 55. And this is like 225 channels, all right. <coughs> and when you say channels, we're talking about voice channel, okay, voice channel, okay, which is 64 kilobits per second. That's the size of the voice uh, uh, channel. So you have 255 channels which are used for downstream, uh, um, and there is one channel for control. The rest are 224, okay, um, are used for data. So we could achieve up to, theoretically, up to about 13.4 megabits per, um, uh, per, per second, all right? Anyways, the data now is much more higher uh, than that. All right, we saw in here what happens exactly, and we have in here the digital subscriber access multiplexer. <coughs> okay, installed, and, and um, it works like a modem, right? Then in here we come, of course, there is other, other technologies from the ADSL. Maybe they are not mentioned in the slide in here. So you have, um, um, you have like SDSL, if you heard about instead of ADSL, you have SDSL, which is a symmetric digital subscriber. All right, and there is also a higher speed HDSL, high bitrate digital subscriber, and there is also very high uh, um, a subscriber. Uh, to be honest with you, in houses, I, I only have seen the ADSL maybe for small businesses to use the other technologies. Then after that, you have the cable that most of us have, and the same idea in here, the same idea. All right, so you have, mostly cable is used for video. So it has the large band in here, video, like when you flip in the channel, the CNN to Fox News to 
whatever channels, okay? So it, it's, 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 uh, it's a video band. And there is a smaller band for the data upstream and then a little bit bigger uh, than the upstream for downstream uh, for uh, download, all right? Uh, my said if I have, uh, I forgot the company, what I have myself, um, it's not AT&T, uh, Charter. I have Charter. So I just ran the test for you and I showed you this was how much, remind me, how much was one, uh, 150 megabits per second. And this was about 4 megabits per, per second. All of you, you could test your, your connection, the speed. All right. <clears throat> and, um, uh, you know, as a side note, these these bands are are shared. They are shared. All right. Um, they are shared. That means, you know, um, <clears throat> uh, the speech varies. Maybe all of us noticed before that you know when you go home at five o'clock the internet a little bit slow but at nine to twelve o'clock or 1 p.m 1 a.m or 2 p.m it's very fast and the reason for that you know there is you are, sh you are sharing the bandwidth with your neighbors all right so at 5 p.m when you go everybody you know came from work and now they are logging to the internet checking their emails so it will be a little bit slower because it's a shared medium. But at night, everybody in bed except you you're doing homework for the, for DCC. So I will keep you awake and you, you, you'll, you'll see it much more, um, um, you know, uh, faster network. So the way cable uh, modem work, as you see it in here, uh, um, um, so you, uh, I mean, nowadays it's used like in outside to your house uh, fiber. So, um, so, um, uh, so from the, uh, the head end, you have the video, it goes to the combiner, all right? Uh, and it goes through the fiber, all right? And um, if there is a data, it will have a different link, it will be combined. So the video will be combined with, with the data in here uh, to and from the internet and will be transmitted from the co company. Okay, distribution. And you, uh, at your home, in the customer residence, <clears throat> you will have a tap. So the company comes and connects your house to a wire. Usually it's like next to the electric wire. And um, uh, the data will go to the filter. This filter will be able to split the data to a video, gonna go to your TV, and um, the data gonna go to the cable model. All right, and then you'll be able to 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 browse it, and that's how it works at your uh, exactly how it works at your um, uh, home. All right, all right. So um, then after that, this is a cable modems. Okay, then after that, um, you know, um, of course, there's different uh, flavors. Uh, there's different flavors for the the HFC. I mean the the cables. The, there is traditional cable networks, and there is a fiber or HFC. Um, it's like a, they call it the second generation uh, cable network, uh, uh, and it's a hybrid fiber with coax cable or HFC, a network HFC uh, uh, network. So the network uses a combination of the fiber optic and coax cable. Okay, and the transmission. Uh, from the cable TV office uh, to a box and so outside of your uh, a box um, uh, um, out, out, outside your house and then it goes to your uh, house. The bandwidth is faster than the DSL. Um, uh, maybe there's a slide for bandwidth. No, there's no. Okay. Here is uh, the slide. Yeah. It's, okay. So there is a video band. We already explained that video bandwidth and transmission. All right, and again, as we said, there is a sharing points, okay, so both the upstream in here, uh, both the upstream and the downstream bands are shared by subscribers, so you and your neighbors will be sharing it. So the upstream data bandwidth is only 37 megahertz, um, and that means that, uh, that only six of the six megahertz channels available uh, uh, available 
um, um, for you. All right, so uh, then after that, we'll go to uh, the T lines, T1. I'm sure many of you heard about the T1 line and T3 line. And again, that's kind of old technology. I mean, before, like in 90s, when you hear that I have T1 line. Wow. So I remember UB, when I joined UB, we had one T1 line, which is 1.4. 1.544 megabits per second. Remember, so in the early 90s, when you say 1.544 megabits per second, remember what we did the test in my house, how much it was? It was like, okay, it was like 150 or 154. So it's like 100 times fast. My house now is faster than UB in 1993. Because T1, the, then you have the T3, which is 44.736 megabits per second. So this is like even all technologies now. We are dealing with a gigabit. You really need to appreciate the data. So you need to, you really need to know how to, to calculate the data to be able to compare them. It's a very important thing. I mean, like we were dealing with kilobits per second. I told you I started with 16.6, 16.6 kilobits per second. And it was fine. It was great. But at that time, it was like, you know, mostly text communication. And, <clears throat> and uh, uh, there is not much videos, high definition videos. Uh, now I have in my house and we run the test together. It's like 150 megabits per second. Okay, which is like, you know, uh, 10,000 times faster. And sometimes we complain. We fight. Me and my children, every day we fight about the Internet. Because everybody having school from home and everybody teaming and uh, Zooming from here. So sometimes we all stuck. You know, um, we compete for, for the speed. Anyways. Uh, um, uh, back then, you know, the sizes of the files in kilobits, in kilobytes, kilobytes, five kilobytes, ten kilobytes. Now, a video, one video you download, it could be one terabyte. One video, one terabyte. Okay. All right. So the life is is completely different. Everything has changed. Um, but you know, I mean, you have to understand how much we have gone. Uh, over the internet uh, changes and development and and you know the improvement that is happening in the infrastructure in the data com computing and the communication is the reason uh, be a reason behind many successes we have right now without this speed you will not be able to watch videos from home right so these the the uh, the data rate for T1 line, um, it, uh, it's as I, as I said, it's 1.54, um, which is 24 voice channels. Okay, 24 voice channels, and and you have to understand this term very well. Voice channel is like one phone call. That's a voice channel. Okay, so that means. This T1 allows only for 24 voice communications at one time. Then you have the T3, which is a 44 something megabits per second. All right. Now for a trunking, trunking is like communication, um, 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 and uh, it's not. It, it's like communication point to point, but between like. Uh, distant places okay it's not okay like uh, connecting like states or cities or like big companies together for the trunking trunking that means combining multiple communications so for a high bandwidth of uh, fiber optic started to be used and this suitable for you know highest data rate technologies or like like for video conferences etc etc and for carrying large number of lower rate technologies um, um, like uh, the clan technologies. All right. So NC created um, a set of standards called Synchronous um, Optical Network. Okay, Synchronous Optical Network. 
uh, to handle the use of fiber optic cables um, and it defines like high speed carriers so these we call them trunking or carriers actually so first uh, the sonnet first defines a set of electrical signals um, um, uh, which is the STS, uh, the synchronous transport signals, synchronous transport signals. Then it converts the signals into optical signals called uh, optical carrier OC. So you have in here the synchronous carriers will be converted to optical uh, signals. The optical signals then it transmitted at 8,000 frame per uh, per second. So in here, as you see, the rate, so the OC one is 51 megabits per second to OC18, which is, uh, which is like 933 megabits per second, which is not even 1 gigabits per second. Nowadays, in the backbone, we use 10 and 20 and 40 and maybe 100 gigabits per second. So that, 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 that was the evolved. All right, and then we have the point-to-point -point frame. Remember in here what we are talking. Okay, let me go back. All of these technologies uh, uh, in here, uh, in here, point-to-point ones, point-to-point ones. So, so we are sending in frames, right? Okay. So um, when you take a look at the frame, and we don't have to go in details into the frame. Again, the frame it has a flag for of uh, you know, um, you know, you know for uh, synchronization. Uh, so uh, point to point, uh, um, um, it's used for telephone line and cable uh, companies for the physical uh, link. So that's what we see, the communication we see in the uh, physical link, and we'll have layers, okay? Um, so um, um, so P, or we call it PPP, uh, has only a physical and data link layer. It's not seven layers, only two layers, which is the physical and the data link layer, and no specific protocol is defined uh, for the physical uh, layer um, by the PPP. So two layers only, physical and data uh, link. All right. So in here you have the address, the control. Of course, the control will lead to many information, the protocol. Then you have the data and padding and the uh, control. And to know the beginning and the ending of the frame, we have flags. Flag and a flag. All right. So again, yeah, if you need to know what exactly there, just check the book. Uh, it's again another map um, that you need to worry uh, about. Okay, so um, uh, again, I mean, what we said, just re remember that we said there is two layers in the PPP frame. There is physical layer and data link layer. Okay. Um, so uh, there is uh, there is uh, the link control uh, uh, there is the link control uh, uh, protocol uh, and there is the network control protocol um, uh, uh, and the link control protocol is responsible for uh, establishing maintaining and uh, terminating the link that's for the link control protocol also uh, so and there is also the network control protocol. Um, and um, <clears throat> um, and it's used for um, uh, to include upper protocols like IP. All right, so you could transfer IP packet on top of the point-to-point -point protocol or a PPP protocol. Anyways, so uh, just to let you know, I mean, uh, it's good to know what is out there. Then now the modern uh, networks are the switched WANs, okay, and WAN is wide area network, and that's the backbone for most of the communication, okay, for most of the communication happening, uh, okay. So let me just, you know, make sure that everybody is there, and where is everybody here? Uh, let me see who is there. So uh, let me pick a few names and uh, for discussion, please don't feel 
uh, everybody there is only one person with a camera here I think uh, so let me pick somebody without a camera then all right so uh, um, uh, Sagan, are you there, Sagan? Yes, Professor. All right, so tell me uh, what do you know about WAN? What makes WAN a WAN? Let me tell you, let me help you. Let me help you. Are you there? You are muted, Sagan. Oh, I'm here, Professor. All right, so let me help you. One is not a Chinese name, something else. So what makes what makes one a one? So let me help you one more time. So I mean, like usually, we have land and the land. And we connect them with a router that makes it a WAN. All right. So um, WAN is the interconnecting interconnection between different lands where we have different subnets. We'll talk about it later. Okay. So just remember that for now. WAN is the interconnection between lands, different lands, different subnets. All right. We'll talk about subnets. What are the subnets? Don't worry. We'll come to this, you'll know it very well. All right? Thank you, Sagan. So, people, how are you? Yes, officer. All right. So, yeah. uh, so switched one, is it a point to point network in your opinion? Switch one, mm, no. Okay, so it's what? A mesh, mesh of point to point communication is a switch land, right? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's like multiple point to point. It's like a mesh communication, right? All right, so uh, Okay, <coughs> so let me continue and uh, I'll, I'll call you again for a wake-up call in a second So the backbone network in the internet right now can be switched one. It's a switch one. That's the technology We were talking about the past, but it's very important to know and very important to appreciate How did we go? Um, through many years, through many efforts and investment to the current status quo. All right, it did not come very easy. Okay, so Switchland is a wide area network that covers large area and provide access to several points in the users. And that's how is the internet. It's a one, it's interconnect, it, it, it's like interconnected networks together created the internet that we live in so it's a mesh of point-to-point -point networks all right all right so how it works maybe through the course we know more but let's take a look a little bit about how it started with all technologies I'm sure many of you did not hear about exit 25 okay I'm sure maybe you heard about frame relay so I remember that when when, when I connected Bri UB campus in a Bridgeport with uh, with the Stanford campus, we used to have a campus in Stanford. We used the frame relay. All right, that was a long, long time ago. ATM, ATM, it was like a hot topic in early 1990s. I used to teach it in details. Now it's gone. Nobody use it, right? Uh, do you know what does ATM stand for? Anybody knows? Automated transaction machine? Automatic teller machine? Transaction, not teller. <laughs> no, not really. Machine. Not really. So it's not it's not it's not not both. It's not automatic teller machine does not give money. And uh, it's, uh, it, mode. it's uh, a synchronous uh, transmission mode. Uh, we'll talk quickly about them. Just I need you to know. I mean, I could have skipped this back background chapter and moved to the IP, but I really wanted you. I really wanted you to know what was the history, what's happening there. So at least when you hear these terms, when you read about them, I mean, read them anywhere. You just you have like the the high the high view of them. What 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 they mean? All right. So 
take uh, so let's just start with the x um, x uh, uh, twenty um, uh, five. All right. So just bef before we go that, just we have to understand that switched one technology um, is a connection oriented technology. All right. We spoke about this, if you remember last time, right? We spoke about it, about the connection and connection. Does anybody remember what we said about connection oriented communication and connectionless? Yes, that's uh, for UDP and TCP protocols. TCP is a connectionless connection uh, because it used the free handshake, and UDP is connectionless because it doesn't care if the package got delivered or not. Excellent. So UDP is connectionless, okay, and TCP TCP is connection oriented, correct? Yes. How about IP. Connection oriented. Is connectionless. IP is connectionless. Okay. All right. So let me give you explanation. What is the difference? With example that you never forget. Okay. We never forget. So connection oriented is a guaranteed transmission. Okay. Connectionless is not a guaranteed transmission. So if you need to have analogy for them, it's like compare the phone with the mail okay phone is a connection oriented so for example all right if i want to tell you that there is no class next week if i use the phone i have to establish a connection with you what i will do i'll dial the phone i'll establish establish the connection you are the, the, the other side accepted i'll tell you next week there is no class all right, then you say, oh, great news, right? You'll be happy, right? And all of that, right? So this is connection-oriented. You establish the connection, you talk, and uh, and the delivery of the data is guaranteed, right? Con that's connection-oriented. The connection is like the mail. I could write to a letter, and I put it in the mail. Hey, there is no class next week. So... If you are a person like me, read his mail once a month to pay the bills, what will happen? You'll come, oh, to, you'll, you'll come to the class and you find no class, right? All right. Why? So it's not guaranteed. So, so um, um, a, a switch network is, uh, uh, the one switch network is connection-oriented protocols. Is a connection oriented. So always you have these terms, you really have to understand the, them very well. Connection oriented and connections. Keep them in your mind. These are very important terms that you have to know. So switch one technology is connection oriented technology. All right. So before the sender can send a packet, that's what does it mean. Before the sender can send a packet. A connection must be established between the sender and the receiver. Connection needs to be established. Exactly like the phone when you dial the phone. You don't you don't just hold the phone and you start talking, right? You have to dial. You have to establish a connection first. Okay, and that's what is connection oriented. Okay. After the connection is established, it is assigned an identifier. So the and this identifier um, uh, is a label, we call it a label, and it will be used during the transmission all the time, all right? Um, and the connection is formally terminated when the transmission is over, all right? And the connection, the identifying label, what we call it label, um, uh, um, is used instead of source and distance. So all the packets going back and forth will use what? The label. They will use the label they will not use the source and destination in the ip address last time we just saw that how ip address work right in the ip address what did we use for transmitting source address and destination address all the time why it's not a connection oriented it's connectionless so please remember that very well it's a very important to to know that and you know that these concepts are very important to know very well all right 
So let's talk a little bit about the X25, which is deprecated technology. Okay. Um, um, so X25 uh, protocol introduced before I was born, actually, in 1970s. And it was the first switched net one uh, and became very popular in Europe and the United States at that time. It provides end to end surface, end to end surface. All right. All right. So that, me that means it's connection oriented. Okay. Um, it, it could carry IP packets uh, uh, from one part to another part of the world, and there and, and there was always a conflict between the IP and X25. So IP by itself, uh, the IP is um, a third layer, is a network layer out in top of the the X25. Uh, All right. So the IP packets had to encapsulate. In the X25 network, so do encapsulation, all right. Um, um, so the, the packet will be encapsulated. So the IP packet will be encapsulated inside the X25 uh, X25 network layer packet, and will be carried from one side to side. You know what encapsulation means, all right? It's like a box inside a box. Okay, it's like a car. Think about the car as an IP packet, right? And to transfer this IP packet, we put it inside a truck. This truck is X25. All right, so it will be encapsulated. It has a. It it was not uh, the surface. I mean, it was like slow. It was not a good uh, communication, but it did the purpose. Okay. Um. All right, so also at that time, frame relay. All right, and let me give you another imp two important terms that you need to know. All right, so I, I already explained to you, and this is very, very important to know. You can't take a network class, don't know that. So the first one we spoke about, okay, is connection-oriented and connection. -oriented. So these, you have to understand them very well. If you forgot... Just remember the phone and the mail and the test, all right? The other one is that we have to remember very well uh, the protocol is either a frame-based or a cell-based, all right? You know what's a frame, right? Frame is the data at the second layer, right? At the data link layer. So a frame is a variable size. It has a minimum, a minimum and a maximum size, okay? A cell is a fixed size. All the packets are fixed size. We call them cell. ATM uses cell of the size of the cell is 52 octets. Octet means bytes. All right. A frame is a variable length. There is a minimum, there is a maximum, but a variable length. So when you hear a frame and when you hear a cell, you should be able to see the difference or you understand the difference between the frame and uh, uh, the, the cell. Clear? Is it clear um, uh, the difference? So let me pick somebody. Arsha, Arsha Cardani, are you there? I'm here, Professor. Arsha, what's the difference between uh, cell and the frame? And give me example. Uh, uh, okay. Between the frame and the cell. Uh, I'm not sure about the frame. But How about the cell? <laughs> a cell is like a small unit. Uh, what do you say? Uh, what do we call? It's like a small unit in the jail where they put people there. No, not that cell. Okay, there is a cell also in the with the with the with the bees. They call them cell. There's another cell, you know, the body have cells. All right. Yeah. That's that's not the cell we're talking about, right? Yeah. Uh, we're talking about the, the, the packet, the data, usually is put into a frame, right? Yes. So the frame, if it's a variable size, we call it a frame. If it's a fixed size always, we call it a cell. That's, that's the difference. All right? Okay. 
All right, so that's the cell and the frame. So that's the second thing I need you always to, to remember, guys, when we talk about that. So uh, in here, I mean, like, this is ATM. Uh, ATM, okay, ATM is a cell technology. It's not a frame technology. So it divides the data into a fixed size cells, which is 52 octets, all right? And then it does multiplexing. So this is the line in here. It will receive, for example, this is one line, and this is another line. Let's say there is computer at the end in here, computer at the end in here, computer. So the data could be a message, the whole message, and, and it will be divided into frame. Frame, it has minimum size and maximum size, and then a cell. So ATM, it use a cell. That's why we call it a cell technology. So it will divide the message into cells, each cell 52 bytes, same in here, same in here. And then it does a multiplexing, all right? So the first thing is sent A1. Then in here, there is nothing. Escape it, it goes to C2, send C2. Then it go to A, uh, uh, A2. Then it go to P1, because there is one in here, then C2 then A3, then B2, then C3, and so on and so forth. So this is like multiplexing. So the data will go all the way to the destination. And the destination, what does it do? D mux, D multiplexing, the reverse operation. So we'll distribute them back to the destination, destination um, uh, uh, nodes. All right? So this is uh, 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 the architecture of ATM is a switched uh, network. So as you see in here, this is of the end point, end point, end points in here, end points in here. So the data does not go directly point to point to the end point. Okay, it goes through multiple switch. And that's why we call it a switched network. Why? Because the data or the cell will switch from one highway to another highway. It will switch from switch 1 to switch 2 to switch 3 to the destination. Okay? So that's why we call switch network. Okay? So that's okay. So ATM, which is a synchronous transfer mode, ATM, a synchronous transfer mode, it's not a thematic teller machine. Okay? Um, um, uh, it's a cell relay protocol, okay? Anyways, it was hot at the beginning, but, you know, it died very soon. So the cell network will use a cell as a basic unit for data exchange. Remember that, all right? Anyways, okay. And, of course, it will, on top of it, so, the okay, so uh, is it connection-oriented or connection is connection-oriented? So, so what we'll do, it will create between the source and destination a virtual private ID, okay, um, um, uh, for communication, okay. Uh, um, so it will create a virtual circuit, and each virtual circuit will have, uh, will, will have um, uh, a virtual uh, circuit identifier. So... If, uh, so, for example, this in here is the circuit of private identifier 14. So all the packets with, uh, with this identifier will go through this channel to the destination. All right. And, of course, on top of the ATM, we'll send different, we could send, like, IP, uh, IP um, uh, uh, packets. So the virtual connection is defined by the pair of numbers, the VPI, and we already mentioned the VPI and the VPC. Okay, VC, virtual circuit identifier, and virtual private um, identifier, or virtual path identifier, I'm sorry. All right. So as you see in here, so you have the physical layer, you have the ATM layer, then you have the adaption layers. So if you need to send an IP packet on top of ATM, so it will use the adaption uh, packets to include, include it uh, inside it. Uh, so in here, as you see, um, I'm not sure where we're starting in here. So in here, the upper layer, let's say uh, uh, it's such IP. 
IP layer, like in your computer. So from your computer, it's gonna go to their switch as an IP packet, and then after that, it will be adapted or changed to be a cell. So it's gonna go to the adaption layer in here, and it goes to the physical layer, it goes to the switch in here, up and down, switch up and down, switch up and down, and then it comes to your endpoint as an IP packet. All right. Remember the word encapsulation. Encapsulation is what you use. All right. Um, so the IP protocol uses um, the AAL file sublayer or adaption uh, layer. So let me skip this. Okay, you already got it. Uh, I don't want to break before I finish this chapter, so just give me a five minutes to finish this chapter quickly. All right, so let's take a quickly take a look at connecting devices. All right, all of us heard about devices, right? We hear about devices here and there. We heard about the hub, we hear about uh, repeater, we hear about switch, we hear about bridge, we hear about modem, we hear about router. Right? We hear about these. So what's the difference between these devices? Very quickly. All right. And that's what we use in the current, you know, um, um, networks. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. So it's, it's a very good to know the distinction between them. All right. So some of them are obsolete. You can't buy them anymore. Like a hub. You can't buy a hub. They are all replaced by switches. All right. All right. Okay, uh, and and switches, uh, switches. There are different type of switches. There is managed and managed, uh, managed and unmanaged switches, and there is layer two switches and layer three switches, and there is routers. I'm sure you have heard these terms, so I'll try to make them clear to you. What is the difference between these uh, terms? So again, LANs and ones do not normally operate on isolation. They are connected to one another to the internet. All right, that's what forms the internet is a connection of lands and ones all over, right? All over the world. The world. How they are interconnected with these devices that we're gonna talk about. All right. So repeaters. All right. Repeaters. The word repeater is used for analog. So what is um, uh, uh, you know um, uh, 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 repeater is like useful before long time ago for analog, right? What will happen in the signal when you send a signal? Come on. Good, okay. So what will happen before, like let's say that you have in here a node A, okay, or node 1, and node 2 in here, okay? And remember, remember that for Cox cable, the maximum distance is 185 meters, right? I'm sorry for the writing is very bad, right? All right, so let's say the destination in here is 300 meters, not 185 meters, right? Okay, so what will happen when the signal goes from one side to side? Okay, it will start strong, okay, strong, like about at the end becomes weak. All right, so what we do, we insert a repeater, okay, a repeater in here. So what is repeater? Repeater is a dumb machine, actually. What does it do? What, do, what does it do? It, it will, um, it will um, um, uh, 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 amplify the signal, all right? And the signal, as it goes, it will have noise. So there's a signal, okay? and noise right signal to noise ratio so the signal will pick so when it comes to the repeater all it does it will make it will give power to the signal so if this signal has a lot of noise the noise will be huge as well so it will amplifies the signal and the noise so it used long time ago for the analog communication it's a dumb uh, dumb dumb machine so that's repeater Okay, let's talk about hub, all right? So hub is for digital communication. So usually, usually, if I know how to erase, okay, here, okay. Wow, that's really cool. All right, so usually in here, uh, when you transmit in here, 
in the digital communication what you are sending like one one zero one one zero digital right and again it's like a signal it will be sent like a signal oh, I'm sorry like that then zero then one again one then zero right send so again when it's transmitter the signal will be weak when it goes there so what the what what the hop does it will read the data again all right in here it read it and it will generate it again with a newer signal or signal so it's much more smarter than repeater repeater just amplify the signal with its noise all right it's exactly like when you have the mic all right and you you have a song with noise so the mic what does it do amplify everything okay that's what's repeater the hub is a smarter little bit smarter device all right so that it reads the data again and regenerates it again so you'll have a fresh a new fresh signal in here like this okay transmitted all right and uh, that's what it does okay that's what is hub fortunately also hubs are obsolete all right so be because they are stupid again in a different way I'll explain why they are uh, stupid